Maybe the most obvious characteristic of big data is that it's big, is there's a lot of data. The consequence for the social sciences is that we can often forego the sampling process. So usually we have the entire universe of people that we're interested in studying, for example, everybody who votes, and then we take a sample. It's just a small selection of people, for example, an exit poll, some people who come out of the voting booth, and that's the small end. So the universe is usually the big end, the sample is the small end, it has to be representative, and from that then we infer how the universe might have behaved. Now, in the digital paradigm, we have the digital footprint of actually almost everybody. There are as many mobile phones on planet Earth as there are people. Even among those living in extreme poverty, living with less than a dollar a day, mobile phone penetration is about 75%. Usually if something reaches 80%, Economists usually say, well, that's that's universal. For example, electricity reaches about 80% of the households worldwide. And people say, well, that's universal. It doesn't go further than that. I mean, we cannot care about every little hut in the mountain and every little uh, hut in the desert. Like 80%, that's as good as it gets. So surely we have reached universality in an economic sense in terms of capturing everybody into this digital footprint, for example, through mobile phone records. And social scientists have shown that you can use data records like call duration on mobile phones and call frequency to predict socioeconomic, demographic, and other behavioral traits with an accuracy of about 80 to 85 percent. What does that mean? That means if we just have the data about how frequently you use your phone, how frequently you make phone calls, and the duration of these phone calls that you make, one can reverse engineer if you're a man, if you're a woman, uh, what kind of income you have, your educational level and, and your age. And that is extremely important because in many countries, especially developing countries, we don't even have an idea how many people there are in Africa, only in some African countries, less than half of the children have a birth certificate. We don't have a registration of them. We surely don't know a lot about their income because we don't have the money to do surveys, to do samples. We have now a much more detailed picture, a much more fine-grained picture about who is out there, what are their characteristics, what are their attributes, and what are their behavioral traits. And that's the first condition in order to understand society better. And the amazing thing is that this happens, that this is possible without the need for sampling. Everybody leaves this digital footprint behind and in theory we can use it in order to study it. Now you can use the digital big data footprint also to study some maybe less important and less urgent but nevertheless not less interesting aspects of society. For example, marriages. What are the problems people struggle with in marriages? Socially a very extremely relevant question. So if you have enough money, go ahead and do a survey and ask people. Uh, but then there's a the question, do they tell me the truth or not? Or what you could also do is you just step back and quietly observe what people search on the internet together with the word marriage. And you find that the two most common words are sexless marriage. Actually, that's three times more, more common as a search term than unhappy marriage, three and a half times more. Even so, it's a huge concern uh, to, to online users, to people who, who look for, for guidance online. So now we can dig a little bit deeper and see what other related things people search. And you can find, for example, that the phrase, my wife won't have sex with me, is slightly more worrisome to people than the phrase, my husband won't have sex with me. It's a pretty close call, but it is more worrisome. The, the, the first one, that the wives won't have sex, is, is slightly more worrisome to, to these online users. Now, interestingly enough, if you go to the premarital stage, the phrase, my boyfriend won't have sex with me, is twice as worrisome than the phrase, my girlfriend won't have sex with me. So, so there's the other way around, there's the boyfriends. I mean, what's up with all these boyfriends? But we can see that the girlfriends nowadays, they're really concerned about this fact. So this gives you interesting insights and nobody had to do a survey here. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that this reflects everybody of humankind and not everybody of humankind has the same internet access and not everybody of humankind is the same likely to, to ask these kind of questions online and search for them online. So you have, again, some problems here of representativeness, but 
you don't have you didn't have to do a survey so there's still bias questions but they're different than sampling uh, bias questions if you do a survey and, and, and you sample with a survey so there are statistical challenges but they are different uh, nowadays now the fact the idea is that you have the entire universe also convert some kind of question that before that were rather joke or funny it converts them into really serious science questions for example let's go to the online dating site okcupid and let's have a look at what kind of men women find attractive what kind of man profiles women think look good and you will find that women who are younger who are between 22 and 23 they think men who are a couple of years older look good so men who are 24 25 years old uh, they like them and women who are a little bit older who are 45 uh, 46 they like men who are a little bit younger who are 39 40 so younger women think a little bit older men look good and older women think a little bit younger men look good so you get this diagonal over uh, here this interesting diagonal in the in the data what about men what do you think well there's a clear result here men independently from how old they are they always think that women who are 21 year old look best it's just a straight line there's no no doubt here no discussion here and, and usually this is kind of like a cocktail party joke you know the joke when we would say oh they always say men are so inconsistent that's not true men are very consistent they always like women who are 21. <laughs> now this here is not a cocktail party joke these are 3.5 million users and they did not even know that they were observed they just looked around now this is a huge huge representation of society and it converts what before was like a stereotype joke into a serious social science question which might be quite worrisome actually